All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to week one of APDL season 15. My name is Ark, and welcome to our economy season on Showdown. It's a really, really fun league dedicated to having an immersive experience uh, where we have our own functioning economy, uh, where you buy, sell items, buy all your Pokemon, and have a bunch of other fun stuff involved. Uh, this week we are playing against Cat Fox and his Gallivant and Galaze. I haven't played against Quincy in a very long time, so um, this stands to be a really, really fun match. He was my partner for Season 12, uh, which was our duo season, so he and I get along super well. He's a really great guy. You guys should definitely go check him out if he is making content. But uh, as far as the match goes, so if you did not watch the draft review, I highly encourage you guys to go do that first. Uh, it explains kind of the concept of the season and how things are going to work. Uh, but in case you don't want to do that, let's just briefly touch on a few really important things. So it is week number one. We get six Pokemon to use from our draft, and all of them are pretty bad. Uh, they come from the tier seven uh, section of our draft board. So uh, we have some very not amazing Pokemon to use. Uh, in addition to that, each team was given $150 to spend on items for the first week. I took the decision to not spend any of my money at all, so I'm going to be using a singular item that was gifted to me, which was a charcoal, and I'm going to bank my cash and hopefully be able to buy some better stuff for week two. My opponent bought a couple of items this week. They bought an ability capsule for their ditto, so it has access to imposter. They bought a Choppleberry, which I assume is going to be on the Regigigas. They also bought um, a Shell Bell, which is going to be on another one of their Mons to hopefully get a little bit of passive recovery there too. Uh, and their item gifted to them was a Fairy Feather, which I assume is going to be on the Carbink. So uh, before we get into talking about the team a little bit, let's touch on the bounties as well. There are four bounties each week. A couple of the bounties will be available for everybody to accomplish, and a couple of them will not be available for uh, the majority of people. So our tier four bounty is that you get $25 if you bring a Pokemon that has 84 EVs in every stat. Pretty easy. Uh, the tier three bounty is having three Pokemon on your team obtain at least one KO. The tier two bounty goes to the top four players. Uh, that finish their match in the fewest number of turns, and the tier one bounty goes to the player that obtains the most number of KOs with the move Hyper Beam. <laughs> so uh, we got our work cut out for us. Uh, it's going to be a really fun match. It's really cool to see how some of those external things really uh, influence how the game is going to be played. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and let's talk about the team a little bit. All right, so first on the docket here, we have our boy Meg Cargo. Going to do a very, very brief analysis of the team this week. It's going to be pretty crazy, but you can see my opponent's team on the top of the right side there. Uh, we're just going to go with the no item Meg Cargo this week, Flame Body, because we don't have access to weak armor. Uh, goal of Meg Cargo this week is just to lead it, set up rocks, and hopefully deal with Shedinja immediately. Uh, we have a recover for a little bit of passive recovery, Toxic, to help with some of the bulkier threats like Regigigas, and Lava Plume to help us in the Tropius matchup. Up next, we have our low punny this week, rocking cute charm and a jolly nature. Uh, initially had close combat on this, but after realizing that my opponent had bought a Choppleberry, decided that circle throw could be a really interesting move to use. We can potentially deter some of Regigigas' slow start setup uh, in addition to some other moves. So we have Encore for a little bit of utility. Triple Axle is there for the Tropius, and U-Turn is there for some good pivot. Up third on the list, we have our Simipore for this week. We are the Gluttony ability with an Adamant Nature max HP, max attack, because my opponent's team is relatively slow. Hyper Beam, just in case we want to go for a bounty. We have Waterfall for, for, uh, for some strong stab damage. We also have Crunch to help us uh, hit the Shedinja just in case, and the Gothitelle. And then we also have Taunt uh, to deter any kind of setup or utility from my opponent's side. Up fourth on the list here, we have our Swalot, rocking Liquid Ooze and the Bold Nature. This is my Mon this week with 84 EVs in every stat, which nets me $25 to use uh, for the following week. So for our moveset, we're going to go Sludge Bomb for Stab, Shadow Ball to help us hit Shedinja and the Gothitelle super hard. We have Toxic for things like the Carbink and the Rigigigas. And then we also have Clear Smog, just in case my opponent wants to set up or go for any shenanigans with the car bank, especially with maybe some like iron defense body press stuff. Uh, so hopefully we can get it done. 
Fifth on the list here, we have our Blossom Moana. Uh, we are Chlorophyll on this. We're going to be rocking a pseudo sun strategy with a Jolly Nature. This is a physical Blossom rocking Swords Dance. Leaf Blade for some good stab damage. Triple Axel once again for the Tropius and Drain Punch to help with Regigigas, although it does have Choppleberry, so we need to maneuver around it. But still a cool set nonetheless. And then last but not least, we have our Sunflora rocking our singular item for the week, which is our Charcoal. We're going Chlorophyll with a Modest Nature Max Special Attack uh, and creeping just about everything on their team. We have Sunny Day to set up the sun and get our Chlorophyll rocking. Growth, just in case we can get a boost. Stab, or uh, not, Stab Energy Ball. And uh, that Fire Boosted Weather Ball with our Charcoal, which is a really, really cool set for the week. So there is my team for week one of APDL season 15. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite the group of five right here, or six uh, rather, uh, but it's going to be a really, really fun match, and I hope you guys really enjoy it. I'll see you on the other side. All right, everybody, and welcome as we're about to go over our game with Mr. Catfox. I apologize if I sound funny right now. I have been like deathly sick for the last couple of days, but I'm feeling good enough to, uh, to do a video <laughs> at least uh, for the time being. So, uh, as you saw from probably the preview to the game, uh, again, this is our economy season of APDL. It's on Showdown. So for the first week, we had to draft six, what I consider to be like really, really awful Pokemon. Uh, and people had the option to spend some money on some low tier items or to bank their cash uh, for the next week. So I have a charcoal and that's it. I have five months with no item. The charcoal is on my Sunflora. And uh, my opponent did buy a couple of items. They bought an ability capsule for the Ditto, so it has access to Imposter. Um, Choppleberry as well, which I has to be on the Regigigas, obviously. And I believe they have a Fairy Feather, which I would assume to be on the Carbink. So, as we get into the game here, my game plan is to go straight in to my Meg Cargo. He goes into Ditto right away, uh, which is a, has a really funny name. has Rock Tensil, which... Yes, it very much does. Um, but my my thought here is that Shedinja seems like a likely lead. And if I can get rocks up, I know that it doesn't have heavy duty boots. So as long as I get my rocks up, which I do after he toxics me, I basically get a free kill on Shedinja here, which is really, really good for me. So I decide to swap Semipore because it makes the most sense here. He goes for rocks himself and they're up on both sides for the remainder of the game. So I decide to go for a crunch. Because I wasn't sure what the switch it was going to be. Uh, I assumed that Tropius was probably going to be the option here. So I felt like neutral damage is good. Uh, and then I decide to go for a taunt here. Expecting maybe a Leech Seed subset. Uh, oh, this also has Shell Bell. That, that's another item that he bought. He has a Shell Bell on this Tropius. Uh, so I go Blossom expecting Grass type move here especially. And then now I can start um, trying to get a little bit of momentum back here. Uh, he does go into Regigigas. I decided right here to go for a Swords Dance because... Oh, a Triple Axle, actually. So, forgive me. It's, it's been a few days since we played this game. Uh, I would have loved to go for an SD here. Uh, I assume I didn't because I, I really didn't want to get, like, air slashed by the Tropius. Uh, I should be able to live a hit, but getting rid of Tropius felt very important at the time. So, rather than go for the greedy play with SD, I decided to go for an Axle here. I only get one hit, unfortunately. Uh, but... <laughs> out comes the rock grandfather i'm expecting a protect so he can start like whittling down his turns of slow start so right here is where i decide to sd he actually goes for a toxic which is a good play uh, especially with us not having access to items in these early weeks um going for the status plays and, and trying to drag games out and get your damage where you can is really important uh and i know that since he bought a Chopperberry, that drain punch is not a good play so I decide that I'm just going to go for a big Leaf Blade here. Fortunately, I get a really big crit. That is a very bulky boy. And he goes for a Hyper Beam and knocks me out. So if you didn't see from the team builder, uh, the number one bounty for the week, $100, goes to the player that gets the most KOs uh, with Hyper Beam. Right now, the leader was two. So I felt like on my team, I had like one Mon with Hyper Beam, but I felt like it probably wasn't worth going for the bounty. Um, just because I didn't want to leave myself open to some things, especially like Regigigas. So, I will take advantage of the recharge turn here and go for my Sunny Day. My Charcoal Boosted Weather Balls are going to be doing tons of damage now. So I get rid of Gigas, which is great. Uh, I should be faster than Tropius regardless. Uh, this was Solar Power Tropius, which is really, really funny. Uh, out comes Ditto, and then I decide right here to go for the 50-50. Uh, but he does win the speed time. So... 
Uh, Meg Cargo is a pretty free swap here, though. Uh, I can pretty freely go for a Lava Plume even if Carbink does come out, which it does. And as you can see, I don't do a ton of damage. I do live this body press, though, which is really, really great for me. I get a flame body off, though, which is not as good for my toxic. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. But at the very least, I nerf some of the damage on this after dying to toxic. So how come Simi poor? I decide to go for a waterfall regardless. Even if he goes into another mon, it's still a pretty good play. Body slam comes out, deals no damage, and we dodge the para, which is fantastic. And we pick a... KO up on the rock. So now out comes Ditto once again. And in chat here, you guys don't see it, but uh, in chat here, he realizes that my Simipor has Hyper Beam. <laughs> uh, and he says so in the chat, but both of us decide to go for a crunch here, get a little bit of damage. Uh, I'm fully expecting, since he's gotten one Hyper Beam kill already, that he's going to go for a second here. So I decide to swap to Swalot. And turns out that that was a really good play for me to make. He has to recharge, so I get a nice Sludge Bomb off. And I pick up a KO on the Simipore. Obviously, Shedinja comes in and dies to the rocks, which is great. So now, it is just Gothitelle against my Swallow, my Simipore, and my Low Punny. But it is not over uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So he goes for a Psychic Noise, which is a really good play. Swallow decides to die. Now, I could go into Low Punny and go for like a big move here but i felt like simipore is just faster and even if i don't pick up a ko with crunch the damage is really necessary so i decide to go for that play he takes a lot of damage i died of the psychic noise but at this range a u-turn should be more than enough to take him out so i decide to go into low punny click the button and we are going to pick up a narrow 1-0 victory in week one so really fun game it's really cool to see how already the decisions with um, deciding to like buy items or not items uh, comes into play and how the bounties come into play too. The bounties are really, really cool. <coughs> oh my goodness. But regardless, uh, we're going to pick up a narrow victory, which means that we're going to be able to pick our items and stuff for the next week a little bit later in the grace period, but that's okay. Um, getting a narrow victory means we should be able to pick items on day like three or four. Um, so that's really, really great for us. So uh, appreciate you guys for watching. Sorry again for me being super sick and, and sounding super nasty. Uh, but we will transition into week two. We're going to be playing against Sauce in the Kalamazoo Raichu. Always a pleasure to play him. And uh, it was really, really great to play against Catpox. GG's to him. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all I got for you guys. Uh, like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.